Time and be back in a, you know, hometown in the best acoustics, you know, great place. What would you say, Nigel, if I said you could never play the violin again? I'd say, well, I've done enough of it. You know, it wouldn't be so bad. Would it not? Well, I've, I've played so much violin that well, if it stopped tomorrow, at least we made the most of today. Just try to describe the buzz of going on stage and performing in front of all those people. It is a special adrenaline you get, particularly when you've got the collective atmosphere with the orchestra and your colleagues and friends that you're playing with it's it's an accumulative energy and like it, it, yeah it's going to take me a long time to get down now after every gig it like take me till five o'clock to um to um calm down which is sometimes unfortunately at the expense of other hotel guests um <laughs> today before we saw you for the first time what were you doing how much personal preparation did you do in the hotel unfortunately Today was one of those days which followed yesterday and like um, too much partying. So like you were going to come out with me when I'm going running and stuff, which I normally do every day. And it's great around here, you know, the canals and that is fantastic. But like, um, unfortunately, I was asleep till like about four because I don't think we actually wound up till about ten this morning. So Are you why, serious, Nigel? Yeah, it's a bit heavy, man. How do you cope? I've got no idea. <laughs> Just get drawn along on the on the tide, you know, on the wave of energy, like you know. How many hours practice do you do a day usually? I'd like to call it three hours a day, like sometimes four if I've got a lot of demanding material to prepare. But I like to do three on the violin, and then I like to do a bit of writing of songs on the piano and stuff. What do you say to those who see you as the bad boy or the enfant terrible of classical music? I'm worse than you think. Do you have a favourite composer? Um, if I had to choose one of the classical brothers, then it would be Bach. I think because he's got everything, you know. It's like deep philosophical music, but it's great for your technique and your chops on the instrument. It's got rhythm, melody, it's got every plus point of music. Architecture, structure, heart, the whole thing. So Bach ahead of Vivaldi? Way ahead of Vivaldi, a far superior composer. But I love Vivaldi because it's more like fun. It's the popular music of the Baroque era. Is there a composer that you feel you'd still like to master? Is there one you haven't mastered yet? Well, you know, there's more of Bartok. You know, we play some very simple form of Bartok tonight in the gig. One small song, Sonia Shebek and myself. Like, um, there's more of Bartok. I'd, li I'd like to get my head round and my hands round, you know. So there's every composer, like, you can't say you've mastered it, because otherwise what's the point in getting up tomorrow to try and improve? You've gone on a long journey since the days of working with Yehudi Menuhin. Really, yeah, but, like, Yehudi and... The other main teacher that I had called Dorothy DeLay in New York, they were both teachers who encouraged individuality and encouraged original thinking and to think for yourself. They weren't the type of egocentric professors which were trying to get the students hooked on relying on the professor. They were both trying to like set in motion some little TikTok thing going on in the kids' heads. And like, so we all turned out fairly different, all of us students, you know. What is it like being Nigel Kennedy? Man, I don't look in the mirror too much, man. That's what I've got to say. You know, I don't want to look in the mirror in the morning. Tell me about the hairstyle. Where does the inspiration for that come from? Well, it's, you know, I don't want to pay money to have some bloke or babe mess up my hair. I can mess up my own hair. And so I do it, and it costs nothing. What do you and do? You just cut I've away got on your clippers, own? and it's just like a simple matter. It takes about two minutes to do that. Do you enjoy life? Well, you know, your haircut wouldn't take much <laughs> maintenance either, man, I must say. <laughs> do you enjoy life? I do enjoy life, yeah, I've got to make the most of life, man. You know, I'm a very lucky 
got a beautiful wife, got great friends, you know, obviously, it's a limit how many great friends you can have, you know, it's probably about ten. You and you know. live in Poland some of the time? Yeah, I'm living in Krakow, which is a beautiful town, and that's where I met all my improvising band, which plays my own stuff. And most of the orchestra are from Krakow, one or two from other towns in Poland. And some from England? And one or two from England and one from Australia. Well, I'm half Australian, so like, um, you know, it does, uh, we could call it one and a half Aussies. And now we've got to go back to the dressing room, haven't we? Because you've got to yeah, go on to another gig. And I'm going to get into some more sensible clothes, I hope. Yeah, man. You're doing another gig at the... Another gig in the Glee Club, which we're probably late for already now, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> right, How are you doing, Nigel? Um, well, you don't ask me. I really know. How are you, man? Backstage, Nigel has a visitor in the shape of singer-songwriter and musician Roy Wood. He's a killer man, one of the great, what you call it, heritage of British music. Fantastic man. I really enjoy that concert. It's so great you came to it, man. Can I get your number of you? Because I lost a couple of phones. What a great band. Killer orchestra. Wow, passionate heart. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they're. They're, gli they're gliding into all the Hendrix yeah, stuff and everything. Yeah, no they're problem. Love it. Yeah, they, they got open agenda, not yeah, closed, yeah. you know. Really yeah. nice, man. Great to spend the day with you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for hanging out, man, and thank you for, you know, putting the beats where you need them.